Hello everyone, welcome to EduCare 247. This is the third lecture of Economy and Finance MCQ series. This series is very much useful for RBI and SEBI examination. In this series, we are covering the news from January 2020 to June 2020 in the form of MCQs. And we are taking news from Business Standard, Business Line, Economic Times and Live Mint. So with the help of this series, you can revise all the important news and concepts related to economy and finance that will be useful for your RBI grade B and SEBI grade A examination. Educare 247 has launched crash course for SEBI grade A examination 2020. This crash course is for phase 1, phase 2 and interview preparation. In this crash course we are providing the complete syllabus of paper 2, GS of paper 1, the USP of this course is we are providing MCQs topic wise. Almost 5000 plus MCQs will be provided. Our content are very crisp and concise. Live doubt session will be provided and important concepts will be covered in the form of video. Right now we are running a discount. You can use the coupon code SEBI to get the discount of 1500 rupees. So you will get this course in 1499. This is the best offer you can get. You can visit our website educate247.com and subscribe to the course. The first question is which of the following organization publishes global investment trend monitor report? The answer is United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. This year recently publishes the report for the year 2019. In 2019, the FDI was declined by 1% compared to 2018. In the year 2019, the overall FDI was $1.39 trillion, but it was $1.41 trillion in the year 2018. Why this happened? Because of global weak microeconomic indicators. You can see that China and US is fighting the trade war. So this leads to uncertainty around the world. And also there is a policy uncertainty in terms of many countries. So that also led to less FDI flow in the countries. If you'll see the data for developed countries, it is historically low. It declined by 6% and overall FDI was 4, sorry, 643 billion dollar. If you'll see the data for developing countries which account for more than half FDI flow in terms of India it is relatively good in India the FDI was increased by 16% and overall FDI was 49 billion dollar in the year 2019 so in terms of developing countries the picture is relatively better but in terms of developed countries it was very grim the next question is who among the following will be the chairman of National Startup Advisory Council? The answer is Minister for Commerce and Industry. Recently, central government has notified the structure of National Startup Advisory Council and Minister for Commerce and Industry will be the chairman of this council. The aim of this council is to build a strong ecosystem for nurturing innovation and startups in the country. So that is also very important point. Joint Secretary Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade will be the convener for this council. The nominee of concerned ministries, departments or nation not below the rank of Joint Secretary of the Government of India will be the ex officio member of the council. So basically all the ex officio member will hold the post above the Joint Secretary. So that is also very important. The council will consist of non-official members as well and they will be nominated by central government and the people from different field capable of representing the interest of investors will be the part of this council. So that is also very important point. The next question is which of the following is now world's largest derivatives exchange by volume? The answer is National Stock Exchange of India. So recently this stock exchange has emerged as world's largest stock exchange in terms of volume exchange and it has surpassed CME group according to Futures Industries Association. A NSC is also ranked third in the world in terms of cash equities segment and this number is published by World Federation of Exchange. NSE 
is the leading stock exchange of India and it is located in Mumbai. It was established in 1994 as a first materialized electronic exchange in the country. So these are the important points which can be asked in the examination. Keep these points in your mind. The next question is online web portal Gati is an initiative of the answer is Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. So basically this ministry has launched the online web portal Gati and the portal has been created by National Highways Authority of India taking inspiration from Pargati portal used by PMO. So basically PMO used the portal Pargati for the redressal of different disputes. On the similar line NHAI has launched Gati portal and it can be accessed by NHAI website. Any contractor can raise issue related to any project through this portal and notification will be sent to different official of NHI related to project. Even top management will be also notified. It will bring the transparency in the system and it will lead to speed up the decision making so it will be very important portal for the execution of project now easily the problem can be raised and top management will be notified and redressal will happen instantly the next question is what percentage of specialized supervisory and regulatory cadre of rbi will come from internal promotions the answer is 65 percent so basically reserve bank of india has decided to recruit 35 percentage of specialized supervisory and regulatory cadre from the market and remaining 65 percent will be recruited via internal promotion so that is also very important point ssrc will comprise grade b officer to executive director on november 1st 2019 rbi decided to recognize its regulation and supervision department it merged three regulatory department like banking, non-banking and cooperative banks and make one department. Similarly, the supervisory department related to this was also merged and become one department. So that is important point. This move was aimed at dealing more effectively with the potential risk and that could come about due to possible supervisory arbitrage and information asymmetry. So basically, it will lead to transparency and effective system. The next question is with reference to the IFSC banking units consider the following statement. First statement is recently RBI has notified IFSC banking units participation in rupee exchange trade currency derivatives. Second statement is an IBU is equivalent to an overseas branch for all practical purposes. The answer is both 1 and 2. So basically statement 1 and statement 2 both are correct. So according to RBI notification, IBUs can participate in rupee exchange trade currency derivatives. But banks should ensure their IBUs should have necessary expertise to price, value and compute the capital exchange and manage the risk associated with the product. So that is also very important point. The RBI has also stated that banks should also obtain their board's approval for undertaking such transaction. So basically for the rupee exchange trade, the bank has to take approval from the board. In April 2015, RBI has formulated a scheme for setting up of international financial service center banking units by banks in IBFCs. So that is also important point. It was started in April 2015. An IBO is equivalent to an overseas branch for all practical purposes. It facilitates a base for world class international banking services in country. So remember all these important points. It can be asked in the examination. The next question is in Indian context, the trade is called merchanting trade when the supplier of goods will be resident of one foreign country, the buyers of goods will be resident in another foreign country, the merchant or the intermediary will be resident in India. The answer is 1, 2 and 3. All three statements are correct. Basically, RBI has issued a revised guidelines for merchanting trade transaction under the Foreign Exchange Management Act 1999. In Indian context, the 
trade is called merchanting trade when the supplier of goods will be resident in one foreign country the buyers of good will be resident in another foreign country the merchant or the intermediary will be the resident in india basically merchanting transaction is one which involves shipment of goods from one foreign country to another foreign country involving an indian intermediary so this is important point keep this point in your mind the next question is 2020 global competitiveness index report is released by the answer is in seed 2020 global talent competitiveness index report was compiled by in seed in collaboration with hr firm edeco and google and it was released in davos switzerland this release was coincided with world economic forum annual meeting this report was first launched in 2014 and the purpose of this report is measure the ability of countries to compete for the talent this year india climbed 8th place and it ranked 72 so it is important point this report was topped by switzerland us is on the second and singapore is on the third china ranked 42nd russia ranked 48th south africa ranked 70th or brazil ranked 80th position this is for the brics country basically india ranked good in employability but the ability to match labor market demand and supply is poor for india because of mid level skills india also ranked mediocre in vocational and technical skills so these are the important point you must remember related to global talent competitiveness index hope you have enjoyed the video if you have enjoyed the video like share and comment thank you and happy learning